We're glad to have you join us on Nap Tip on the Move. My name is Angela Agwegi. Our package today brings you some of the numerous activities of Nap Tip, aimed at ensuring a human trafficking and violence free nation. We start with a one day retreat for judges and prosecutors in Abuja. Take a look. In an effort to enhance prosecutorial success, NAPTIP, in collaboration with the National Judicial Institute, with support from the Ford Foundation, organized a one-day retreat for judges and prosecutors on strengthening government approach in preventing sexual and gender-based violence, SGBV, in Abuja. In attendance were judges from the Court of Appeal, Abuja, Federal Capital Territory High Court, State High Courts, the National Judicial Institute, directors and prosecutors from the headquarters and general commands of NAPTIP. The Director General of NAPTIP, Professor Fatima Waziri Azi, welcomed all present. Let me start by thanking my lords for being here. NAPTIP is actually the first anti-trafficking law enforcement agency in Africa. And it is on record that uh, a number of African countries came to understand the work of NAPTIP and uh, which guided their, the establishment of their own anti-trafficking institutions in their various countries and the latest is um, Sierra Leone. My lords, we are all aware of the enormity of the problem we face as a people and as a country when we talk about sexual and gender-based violence. So there's no need reeling out statistics, but we can all agree that the current state of affairs is extremely, extremely disturbing. So this retreat is to create a platform for judges and prosecutors to share unique experiences on prosecuting sexual and gender-based um, violence cases. For the FCT, people are beginning to be aware of these issues and the boomerang effect is increased reportage. And as an agency, we now have more clarity on these um, issues. So bad behavior is no longer tolerated. Actions that used to be normalized in the past are frowned at now. Everyone is calling out everyone. And this is because of the enhanced visibility of NAPTIP as an agency and also our reporting um, channels. We have children even calling to report their parents. We have neighbors calling out on their neighbors. She also highlighted some of the efforts of NAPTIP. In 2022, we received 1,342 uh, reported cases through walk-ins work and via our 24-hour call center. That is in Abuja. And already in 2023, from January to April, we have received 393 reported cases. In 2022, the highest number of reports received were on spousal abuse. We had rape, then inflicting um, physical injury. In 2023, in four months, the highest number of reports received still is on spousal um, battery. In 2022, we were able to secure four convictions in the FCT and we secured one rape conviction in Sokoto. In 2023, we have secured two convictions in the FCT of rape and we have secured additional three convictions again in Sokoto. So in the past year though, there is this exciting 
alignment of the criminal justice system. So we've seen that judges are beginning to met out stiff penalties and it is amazing for for our VAP and also for our trafficking cases. The two convictions that we secured in the FCT this year was 21 years imprisonment without the option of fine, then 25 years imprisonment, you know, without the option of fine, which is very, very fantastic. Because of course, when we have more convictions and we have less impunity, that is what sends a message. So my lords, we, we need more quality conviction so that I can continue dancing. So um, also, my lords, we also love to see more of um, compensation for victims of rape as provided for in section 1, subsection 3 of the VAP Act in addition to imprisonment. And I want to thank my lords for the courage you find in doing what you do. And with the support of my lords, I am certain that um, we will progressively see that much needed traction that we all desire in curbing and controlling incidences of sexual and gender-based violence in Nigeria. The administrator of the National Judicial Institute was represented by the Director of Studies, Onumo Abdulaziz. A workshop such as this could not have come at a better time than now, with the theme, strengthening government approach in preventing sexual and gender-based violence against persons. The need to tackle sexual and gender-based violence against persons in our society cannot be overemphasized as it is evident that gender-based violence against persons is on the rise in our society with women and children being the most affected. These gender-based offenses have become so proliferating that the World Health Organization has said that it is a major public health problem and a violation of human rights of persons. The United Nations also declared sexual and gender-based violence, SGBV, as a shadow pandemic while calling for urgent, comprehensive and effective actions by all stakeholders to cut the menace. Hence, it is at forums such as this that a collective awareness about these issues are created and in turn brings to the limelight the expectations and solutions needed to effectively manage this rising predicament that has befallen our society. Without a doubt, NAPTIP has continued to put immense effort into covering the effects of sexual and gender-based violence cases in Nigeria. After the opening session, the technical session started with the first presentation on the role of the courts in the effective enforcement of protection orders by the Director General of NAPTIP. This was followed by prosecution of sexual and gender-based violence cases evidential issues and challenges, prosecutorial and courtroom strategies by Honorable Justice Olua Yemisi Williams Daudu, Justice of the Court of Appeal. I think this um, retreat, it's very, very timely. Very, very, and particularly for those of us that are here in the judiciary, I, I say to us because they want us to be more sensitized so that we can do that work. So the judiciary is expected to play a pivotal, a driver's role, and whatever we want to call it. Because at the end of the day, when investigations are done, when things are put in place and everything, everything becomes to us, and what do they get? I think that is one question we need to ask ourselves. So the police, all of us that are involved in investigation, we must ensure due diligence is just important. The last presentation was on the role of judges in curbing SGBV in Nigeria by Professor Taufik Ladan, Director General, Nigerian Institute of Advanced Legal Studies. On the role of judges, take into consideration why victims of SGBV are vulnerable why they need protection of the law and why they need actual protection in the context of justice, you know, as part of the role of judges, I would like to say that it is common knowledge that judges have a role, they have a critical role to play because judges actually, you know, uh, can enhance and can protect the rights of victims of LGBT. That's one. They also have a unique role to play 
in crafting appropriate remedies for the benefits of victims. That's number two. And then they also make decisions. Number three, so these two make decisions that affect lives and dignity of both the victims and the perpetrators as well as children and other family members in society related to LGBT. Judges, you know, can trigger appropriately their power of judicial review to evaluate every discriminatory law, all policy, all practice affecting victims of LGBT. Some of the judges made recommendations on the need to strengthen NAPTIB for greater performance. When a file is brought from the police, from the, police, um, the investigation person, the lawyer should look at it. Either what is the merit, what are the grounds? Will I succeed if I go to court? If you require a report on a murder saying that will make your case stronger, suggest that they further investigate. Then, but most importantly, LGBT cases are peculiar when I want to know it or not. Yeah. Peculiar because of the nature. Marty should be funded. There is no reason why Marty cannot have a forensic lab. There is no reason. Why NAPTI? Government cannot prevent NAPTI with a forensic laboratory and train people there. And government should be meant to know that SGBV cases have expanded from what it used to be at the beginning of the time when NAPTI came into being. Now it is all over the place, spreading like wildfire because people are now one world now. The lawyer should be trained. The, uh, should be a to the, the forum was highly interactive and impactful. Concluding the retreat, the Director General of NAPTIP thanked all the judges and facilitators for their invaluable contributions. The retreat will go a long way in enhancing the prosecution of SGBV cases in Nigeria. Our next report is a stakeholders advocacy and consultation meeting organized by the Justice and Peace Development Commission, JDPC. Keep watching. The Director General of NAPTIP, Professor Fatima Waziri Azi, was a guest at a one day stakeholders advocacy and consultation meeting organized by the Justice Development and Peace Commission, JDPC and supported by the Palladium Group. The meeting, which is aimed at strengthening civic advocacy and local engagement, had in attendance traditional rulers, religious leaders, the Federation of Muslim Women Association in Nigeria, the Health Justice Development and Peace Initiative, Network Against Child Trafficking, Abuse and Labor, and NAPTIP. In her speech, Professor Fatima Waziri Azi urged the leaders present to enlighten their communities on the ills of human trafficking. When we talk about issues of human trafficking, it is a societal problem. It is not just a federal problem or it's not just an antics problem. It is all our collective problem. In as much as NAPTIC has been established to specifically tackle the scourge of human trafficking in Nigeria, in its responsibility, in your groups, in your communities, to also help tackle this problem. And how can you help tackle this problem? By consistently speaking against it. So as religious leaders, as traditional leaders, I beg you, use your voice. Because God has given you that voice. You're already a, a, a symbol of authority in your community. Some of the leaders commended NAPTIP and pledged their commitment to the fight against human trafficking. The executive director of JDPC and convener of the event, Reverend Father Solomon Uko, said the meeting is to enhance awareness. Uh, it's been a very positive uh, relationship with the traditional rulers and the religious leaders. The influence that leaders in our communities really is so enormous. We cannot on our own be able to reach out to that extent. So that is a need for us to bring everyone on board, especially the leader, traditional leaders and the religious leaders, to be able to 
carry this message to the very um, extreme of our society. So far, so good. The meetings we've been having before, we've been hearing of a positive response from people and um, the incidences that will have possibly taken place because of this enlightenment, because of this uh, awareness, has been helped to reduce. So our effort is to make sure that in our communities, there are incidences of trafficking that are completely eradicated. The advocacy and consultation meeting was held at the resource center of the Catholic Secretariat in Abuja. The Director General of NAPTIP, Professor Fatima Waziri Azi, was a keynote speaker at the African International Conference on Transnational Organized Crimes. Organized by the Department of Sociology and Anthropology, Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife. Don't go away. The Department of Sociology and Anthropology of the Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, recently held its 2023 African International Conference on Transnational Organized Crime. The Director General of NAPTIP, Professor Fatima Waziri Azi, was a keynote speaker at the event. Her presentation on the multidimensional threats of human trafficking, child labor, forced labor, baby factory and organ harvesting was elaborate and comprehensive, highlighting the definition of human trafficking, smuggling of migrants and irregular migration. Every year thousands of people travel across the world to search for a better life and amongst these people are victims of human trafficking. Human trafficking is one of the most serious human rights violations and the second most profitable criminal enterprise in the world after drug trafficking. The presentation also covered the forms of human trafficking, key drivers, legal framework for combating human trafficking, operational structure of NAPTIP, efforts of the agency, and conviction records. She also shared highlights of a recent publication on the 2023 Global Slavery Report. Although the 2023 Global um, Slavery Report estimates that 1.6 million people are living in modern slavery in Nigeria, the same report also states, and I quote, Nigeria has the strongest response to modern slavery, reflecting strong criminal justice mechanisms to address modern slavery, as well as steps taken to support survivors, address risk factors, and coordinate the response, including by launching a new national action plan on trafficking and prison. Which is why in the past year and a half, we have been able to enhance the visibility of NAPTIP as well as make our data accessible. If you read the Nigerian country study of the reports, the data that was frequently referenced was NAPTIP data. So we need to continue to make our data and information accessible because if we don't tell our own story by giving somebody else the power to shape our country's narrative by telling their own version of what they think our story is. The lecture, which was well received, elicited comments and questions from the audience. In recognition of her efforts in the fight against trafficking in persons in Nigeria, Professor Waziri Azi was presented with an award. In attendance were the Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Professor Uluwele Adarabola, representative of the Acting Comptroller General of Immigration, ACG Kemi Nandap, other eminent personalities and students. Capacity building is paramount for enhanced efficiency and effectiveness. Recently, NAPTIP and the Attorney General Alliance Africa, AGA Africa, organized a workshop for officers of the agency. The National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons and the Attorney General Alliance Africa, AGA Africa, recently organized a five-day workshop on strengthening anti-human trafficking efforts for investigators and prosecutors of NAPTIP at Kefi, Nasarawa State. In his opening remarks, the International Advisor, AGA Africa, John Edozier, outlined the dangers of human trafficking. Human trafficking is a heinous crime. Reports from the United Nations Office on Drug and Crime, UNODC, 
show that an estimated 750,000 to 1 million people are trafficked in Nigeria annually, with victims often subjected to forced labor, sexual exploitation, and other forms of modern day slavery. It is a difficult problem that requires a coordinated and comprehensive response from all of us. It is for this reason that the Attorney General Alliance Africa program is proud to collaborate with the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, known as NAPTIP, which has been at the forefront of the fight against human trafficking in Nigeria. As a program, we are committed to working with NAPTIP in recognition that there is still much more to be done to combat this pervasive issue. Declaring the workshop open, the Director General of NAPTIP, Professor Fatima Waziri Azi, stressed the need for synergy between investigators and prosecutors. The successful prosecution of human trafficking as a deterrent depends on the capacity of investigators to effectively collect intelligence and investigate allegations of human trafficking. And in the same token, the capacity of prosecutors to successfully present relevant evidence gathered by these investigators before the law courts to ensure convictions. It is not enough to just say the words. Until we continue to put perpetrators behind bars, no matter how long it takes, it doesn't send a message that it is zero tolerance. And we can achieve this when investigators and prosecutors collaborate and synergize from the initial stage of handling these cases rather than working in disconnected silos. Having declared the workshop open, the technical session started with a virtual presentation on an overview of the strategies for combating human trafficking, international perspective by Anita Nyangjong, a counter-trafficking in persons expert from Nairobi. This was followed by interactive session. The interactive workshop provided an avenue for exchange of information and ideas to effectively combat trafficking in persons in Nigeria. NAPTIP's prosecution efforts are yielding tremendous results. From January 2023 till date, the agency has secured 42 convictions and counting. A national industrial court in Kano State, presided over by Honorable Justice Abeye David Eseimo Isele, has sentenced three convicts to 30 months imprisonment without option of fine. The first convict, a 30-year-old female, Loveth Bob, was sentenced to 30 months imprisonment without option of fine for attempting to procure the illegal entry of a 21-year-old female from Abuja through Kanu to Italy. The second convict, a 34-year-old female, Akimba Bola Mutunrayo, was also sentenced to 30 months imprisonment without option of fine for attempting to procure the illegal entry of a 16-year-old female from Ondo State through Kanu to Libya. Lastly, the third convict, a 29-year-old male, Ahmed Olabi, was sentenced to serve 30 months imprisonment without option of fine for attempting to procure the illegal entry of a 22-year-old female from Ondo State to Egypt. The offence is contrary to Section 29 and punishable under Section 26, Subsection 1 of the Trafficking in Persons Prohibition Enforcement and Administration Act 2015. NAPTIP has secured 42 convictions and counting in 2023. The agency is zealously prosecuting offenders to serve as a deterrent. Our victim story segment is up next. Stay with NAVTIP on the move. I'm living with my father. I not uh, marry another wife. I was in my stepmother. So that my stepmother, she's maltreating me in this Abuja. One day, my father chased me from the house. I used to sleep in one computer building near one woman's house. Every day I used to stay there. The woman told me that, what are you doing here? I said, nothing. Is it easier that I used to sleep? I said, yes. The woman now take me to his house. I used to sleep there. She used to give me food. I stayed there for one week. So the woman take me to my dad's house to, to beg 
for me. My father refused, so the woman not take me. The woman not take me. My father even told the woman that even though she wants to use me for ritual, that let her take me. So the woman not take me away. She now connect with my. I show her my mommy's sister house. So they now connect with my mother. My mom now said that I should come and stay my grandmother's side so i went to Imo state to, to stay with my grandmother so my mom sister senior sister just come from nowhere that she's going to take me she's going to take care of me she's going to put me on school when i come back from school i'll go to work so i stay in the house i'm so feeling hungry and i went out one woman now saw me that can i do job for her so that she'll pay me money uh, so that i can use the money and eat and i say yes when i'm doing the job my small sister with her husband then i came i didn't sleep at home that night i sleep in my neighbor's house the next day they now go and look for me they bring me out home they naked me tie me tie me with in my leg and my hands so as they tie me they start flogging me they even the husband even pull me for my leg Wanted to burn me. The wife, she not take the matches. She now lock me inside a room for two days. She now bring me out. Before my, she now lose the hand. I cannot use the two hand and do anything. When they are just collapse, I don't even know where I am. And they now take me to hospital. My mommy sister, the one that is in this Abuja, she now come and take me. So she, she is fearing and she take me from the bus stop, take me to my father's house. The stepmother said that they cannot accept me, that his husband said any day and that I, I ever come back in this house, let it not allow me to enter inside. There is no, I am no more his child and he's not no more my, no, no my dad. So then now my mommy sister now asked, See, they now talk with the policemen with our uh, king near our area. So they now say that it's like they're going to take me to human rights so that I can stay there. Even though I'll be going to school, my father will be paying money for my school fees before they now brought me here. I want to thank NAPTI for everything they have done for me. For more inquiries and support or to report cases of suspected human trafficking, violence against persons and child abuse, please call NAPTIP hotline 0703-000203 or the short code 627 or email us info at naptip.gov.ng. Visit our website www.naptip.gov.ng. Follow us on our social media platforms at NAPTIP Nigeria or watch our videos on YouTube. Our time is far spent. Thank you for watching and do join us again next week. I'm Angela Abwegi. Bye for now.